Okay, this is a fun circuit. It's got four resistors in it, and we're looking for the current in a bunch of places. We're going to use Kirchhoff's law to help us with this one. And Kirchhoff's current law says that the current entering into any junction or node will equal the current leaving that junction or node. Before we can get started, we need to use Ohm's law, and Ohm's law we learned from past is e equals i times r, or we put that in our Ohm's law triangle, e equals i times r, and we use that triangle to help transpose things, and you can see that I've set up my triangles in the circuit, the same as Ohm's law, whatever's on top will be the voltage, left hand side will be current, right hand side will be resistance. I have to look around the circuit and find two values because any two values I'll be able to solve Ohm's law. If I look around I can see that I have 50 amps here which is my I total. I can take that 50 amps and put it into my supply T. Then 50 times 12 will give me the voltage in that circuit or 600 volts. One of our parallel circuit laws was E total equals E1 equals E two, etc. And knowing that I can take this 600 volts and I can use it at each one of my resistor T's. The voltage in a parallel circuit is the same for each resistor. Now I look around and I have lots of places where I can solve for things. 600 volts divided by the 5 amps will give me 120 ohms here. 600 volts divided by 10 gives me 60 ohms there. 600 volts divided by the 15 amps will be 40 ohms, and 600 volts divided by 30 ohms gives me 20 amps. Now I can double check using Kirchhoff's current law. I had 50 amps coming through I total, and at this junction or node, I need to have 50 amps going out. I look and I see I have 5 amps going down through R1, and the remaining current has to continue on. So there must be 45 amps in that portion of the circuit. When I get to this junction or node, I see that 45 amps comes into that junction and 10 amps goes down R2. So going through IY or the ammeter Y, I will have 45 minus 10 or 35 amps. When I get to this last junction, 15 amps goes down and 20 amps continues on, and I can double check over here I did have 20 amps, and that worked out. We continue around the loop, going through I4 will be 20 amps. At this junction or node, that 20 amps will be joined by the 15 amps that's going through R3. So through this segment of the circuit, we'll have 15 plus 20 or 35 amps of flow. When I get to this junction, another 10 amps comes down through R2 and joins the 35 that's returning from R3 and R4. And by the time I get to the ammeter X, I've got 45 amps. At the last junction on the bottom, I have 45 amps coming through ammeter X, and I have another 5 amps coming down through R1, and that will mean that my I total has rejoined and formed 50 amps to go back to PD2.